because she's changing the world one step at a time one girl at a time so i let i let my guest uh beth Okoth to introduce herself and to explain to us what she does and how she's changing the society karibu sana Wasante. as you've heard my name is beth sheba elizabeth otuga those are my official names but i'm also called beth Okoth. Um, I'm happy to be in this place to just highlight the people of the things that I do. I have two major things that I would like to talk about today. I'd like to talk about a ministry that I'm involved in. It's called Widows Transformation Ministry. And then later on I'll talk about a hardy reusable pads. So Widows Transformation Ministry was started by a lady called Mrs. Kabasela, also known as Mama Omore. Mamomore got widowed, and um, when she got widowed, she found that she was in many troubles. It was fortunate for her because she was an educated woman, and at the time she retired, she got another job, which was better than the first job that she was doing. But she had an urge in her heart to reach out to widows so that widows can be transformed and be able to stand on their own. Okay. Because we find that in this society, especially in Western and in the, as now we are changing, uh, women, when they lost their husbands, they were really in a bad situation. Okay, and you as a woman, what inspired you to be part of this uh, association that helps widows? And also what inspired you to start a Hardy Foundation that helps the girls in the society? Uh, what helped me, what inspired me to join Widows was the passion I saw in Mrs. Omore. It's not that she had, Mrs. Kabasela, it's not that she had much, but she would just gather widows who are less fortunate and prepare a meal for them and just listen to them. And many were transformed. I know particularly of two women who could not even afford transport from Dandora to Kayole to come for the meetings. They would walk, and by the time they reach Kayole, the meeting is over, and they're just in time to say grace. They could collect offerings of maybe 10 shillings or 20, and that is what they would be given to go back. Mm. These two women have built houses in their rural area. Okay. So they are transformed, and they are able to stand on their own, trusting God and working hard and looking for opportunities so that they are not dependent, and when they are empowered, even their in-laws cannot mess around with them. Okay, so apart from being inspired by these two phenomenal women who are changing the lives of widows, is there a personal story attached to it that made you decide, that me as Beth, I'll be part of this? Okay, I got widowed in 2006. Mm -hmm. And I was very angry for a long time. And I didn't even want to be associated with widows. I remember one time when I was coming from Ushagu, a uh, sister-in-law asked me, told me, welcome to the club. And so I was so mad. I asked her which club, mm -hmm. the widows club. And I was still hurting. Yes. So I just told her I don't belong to that club and I just closed. But when I came and saw this lady and how she was coming up and helping people, I decided, why not? And like she also trusted me and she wanted me to help her because she's a woman I knew when I was young. She was a bit elderly. We were staying together in the same estate. Mm -hmm. yes. And so how are you able to separate yourself from that bitterness, from that heart, to becoming a person who inspires others in the society? Mm, God dealt with me okay. in that heart. Uh, because when a woman's husband dies, they like think, oh, why me? Because it's so nice to go to other women and encourage them when their husband has died. You don't think that yours may also die. So I decided that um, I'll just trust God to bring me up. Because I knew there was life ahead. I had children and I knew I had to stand for myself. I know where I come from. I didn't have anybody really to depend upon. Okay, my parents were there. They could support me emotionally, but I really need to do things so that I would be afloat. Others I would be long dead by now. I know one particular lady, she died seven months later because it was too much for her to take. So that is what inspired me to come up and join Mrs. Cabasella. Mm. Yes, and so we meet regularly once a month. This, uh, there's a pastor called Reverend Washira. He has given us the church where we meet free of charge. He doesn't charge. And then we just have a few, few people who help us to buy food. Mm. 
So every time we meet, we have meals, very nice meals. You know, widows also, they like to be pampered. They would love to. So they come and we talk, we air out, we help each other in the issues that we, use, we, we pass through every day. And there are many issues that widows pass through, apart from the in-laws and the society. Okay. You have your own personal needs. You need to survive, you need to be empowered economically. You need to deal with issues of your children. You need to deal with your own emotions and many other. So you find that some widows, they are, they are dispossessed from their husband's home. And so when these widows come, we help them. We haven't gone so far as in going to feed her, to help us advocate and things like that. But that is what made me. So when uh, our founder was moving to Eldoret, she, you know, she just brought me in slowly. She mm -hmm. didn't ask me to come. Yeah, I just got involved, there. involved until now I'm there. Okay, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. And you're also a founder of Ahadi Reusable Pads. Mm -hmm. So before we get to Ahadi Reusable Pads, maybe you can tell us your experience as a girl or what motivated you to form this organization that helps girls. Okay, as a girl, me, I grew up in Nairobi and we were living in Jericho. In Jericho, the houses are small. And we were many and we had relatives in the house. So my parents were not poor, but they could not afford many things, luxury. And uh, the issue of pads is a taboo. So you find that girls are shy to ask their mother for pads or even to talk about it. Menstruation was such a secret and a woo-woo thing. Yeah? So when I was in Form 3, we used to go to the reading room at a church called St. Joseph's in Jericho. And um, one time I was just seated and reading and doing my homework. 9 o'clock is home time, I found myself in a pool of blood and I was so embarrassed. There's so much shame and stigma around menstruation. So from that time I wasn't able to go back to the library because I didn't know how it would be. Me and my grades started falling. I was in a day school. So later on I found that um, it's either my career, I wanted to be a teacher, or I just now live in shame. I just took courage and I went back. Nobody asked me. So from that time it rang in my heart that we need to do some... No, later on when I grew up and I was coming towards menopause, the available solutions were not satisfactory for me. So I had to improvise pads. I'm also a teacher, but as a teacher I was in a boys' school. So the thing didn't really magnify itself in my eye. So later on when I came to this myself, I found that, hey, there's a problem. Then I started researching on what can be used and that's how I came with this. I realized from research that 2.8 million girls in Kenya cannot afford pads mm -hmm. and they need to leave school for one way or another. Many have fallen by the wayside because for pads, they go to Boda Boda men or men, they get pregnant, they get HIV, then, then they cannot make it. So for this reason, I thought, why don't I come up with an affordable solution that can help sustain girls so that they can stay in school for one more year? These pads, can last for one year plus other months if they're well taken care of. So what makes them different from the normal pads that maybe are sold in the supermarkets and the shops? The difference is that these pads are reusable. Okay. You can wash them properly. You don't have such a big problem of water in Nairobi and a lot of the counties. I know there are some dry places, but a, a woman is able to get at least a jerry can, the five liter for water to wash her pads and keep. And because women have been using all sorts of things, they cannot afford the regular pads that are in the shops. They're expensive. You can see a pad packet is 50 bob, but they cannot afford. But these ones, though the initial cost is high, but they end up cheaper because you can use them for more years than that one. And they have other benefits also, like they save the environment. Mm -hmm. A woman disposes almost 40 kilos of pads or whatever they use in a year. So if in Kenya we have 22 million women menstruating, tell me about the environment, how it will be messed. Mm -hmm. Yes. So apart from providing the pads to the, the girls in the society, is there any form of education that you offer to the girls and also to the boys? We do, when we do menstrual health management, we put both boys and girls because uh, we are demystifying the issue of menstruation. And uh, when it comes to now the very details, then we can have girls alone on how to maintain menstrual health hygiene. I also do training and counseling 
to these vulnerable girls, and I concentrated so much in the lockdowns, especially the first lockdown, I realized that girls are getting pregnant and they're falling by the wayside. So God helped me to organize outreaches. I did almost five outreaches. One was in Kisumu, another one was in uh, Karibangi South, and three were in, were in Kiambio. And I just, God gave me the idea to reach out because I already had the solution. So I just invited people to come and support because you can buy two pads for two girls to cost you only 1,000. And you'll maintain that girl for one year in school. If she finishes one year and she's in form three, she's likely to say, what animal is it from four in my back? Nikazane. And we, we inject that in them. We teach them self-defense through box girl organization. And um, the stances in boxing are really encouraging. For example, there's a stance that they do like this. It's called guard. It, it causes you to focus. So they focus on their education. They focus on their career of the future. And they are able to now keep going. So when they are on guard, they will guard against all these other things and remain focused. Yes. So is there like a, a specific, uh, when reaching out to the girls, do you reach out to every girl in no. Kenya? Um, there is, a, is a specific group that you focus on? It's so easy to identify girls who cannot afford pads. Me, my main area is Kiambio, Kijiji, Madhari, Huruma, and part of Kibira, because they will just come and ask. And already vulnerable girls are there, you can find them. How did I reach out to Kiambio? There's one lady who came to my house to help me in housework. So one day she could not come and her daughter came and she was in lockdown. So I asked her, uh, do you know of girls who have, fall, who have become pregnant? Because it was all over news and she told me. So through some more organization, I was able to do an outreach to girls who had gotten pregnant to give them pads so that they're empowered now they don't have to worry about pads. They can go out and look for Vibarua. Sawa sawa. Then now we reach to the other girls who are young and in school standard, starting from age 14 to 18. So we, we, do, we do outreach. So I ask people to come and support through cash or in kind. I have women who are empowered and there are big women also in the society to come and talk to the girls. I have one girl, she has an organization called Slay Healthy. She talks about vaginal health. I have Mrs. Wawero. She talks about questions girls would ask. And I also teach them about personal care and I also counsel them on how they can take care of themselves and any arising matters. Mm. Mm. Because you've dealt with this issue for quite some time, mm. uh, maybe you can explain to us how menstrual health and menstrual awareness and also the provision of these parts, how, it, how that is uh, affecting the girl child positively. I would start from the conclusion. Okay. From the girls that we reached out, yes. none of them fell out. They all came back to school when the schools were open. And I, I would really clap for the people who supported us. Eh? Yesterday, the headlines were how girls are pregnant they form for the exams. In the exams, you can find some girls are having exams in the maternity. Some girls are having exams in places where they shouldn't be because of the lockdown and the effect of not having pads and also the cram, cramminess. So... I would really like to do some more in the coming few, few months, but unless people come in to join with me, it will be very slow. So far we've reached, since I started our hardy pads, we've reached almost 1,000. We have had, uh, in our last outreach, Coca-Cola came and gave us drinks, because what we need is some drinks. The aspiring MP for that area gave us the hall. And then I donated the pads, and people also helped me to donate the pads. At the end of the day, I had a shortfall. I didn't make any profit. And my heart was like, oh, God, I'm not making any profit. But by God's grace, like this month, I have gotten somebody who is buying pads. Okay. Yes. Maybe you can demonstrate to us how to use the pads. Okay. We have, this is a reusable pads. Many people are asking me, hey, how come they're reusable? They're re re reusable because they're made of cloth. Okay. These are just clothes. They're like our clothes, but these are spe special. This top layer is called fleece. You can touch and see it's soft. Yeah, it is. And comfortable, mm -hmm. and it is breathable. 
So it doesn't have chemicals also. So what is inside? What is inside is a cotton blanket. Okay. I'll just call it a cotton blanket, quote unquote, but it is an absorbable layer. So, so when, like the normal pad. Yes. Okay. So this, when it goes, when the menstrual fluid goes in, it it is soaked. And you use it now as a normal pad. You will just know that now it's my time for changing. So apart from the fleece, we have the cotton banting. We have a, an oil cloth that helps to make sure that there's no leak. And then this bottom part is the, just to make it look nice to finish. So once a girl is in her periods, she will be having, there are four, pack, there are four, there are four pads inside here. Okay. And this is a reusable bag also, okay. and it is waterproof. Okay. So a lady is likely to use two pads in the day. Okay. So she will carry one pad inside here, and one she's wearing. So when she feels that she needs to change, she'll go to the bathroom and use this one. She will just fold it in. There's a way to fold in so that it doesn't leak. So once she has locked it, she'll be able to put it here. And we tell them that they should not be ashamed of their periods and their whatever they are using. So she'll just come, and the boys also should not feel that oh oh, I got her periods. Don't make embarrass them. Don't laugh at them. So they, she keeps in her bag. When she goes home in the evening, she has a bucket. She will just come, and in menstrual health, we teach them to take a bath at least twice, morning and evening. She'll take it out, put some water, about that much and soak it for 15 minutes. This 15 minutes, she could be bathing herself. So after 15 minutes, and they, they, maybe they're likely to be two pads. She'll pick the pads and just finger out the dirty water. Press out, press out the dirty water. Once you press out the dirty water and do this, it will use less water. So you take cleaner water and rinse a bit. Then the water will be rather clean. Now you put soap and wash. We, you can use ordinary soap can use the soaps that are available. Okay. You can even use Omo. But no hot water. And then you, you wash, you rinse. When the water is clean, you just hang them out. There's no shame. We tell them there's no shame in hanging out your pads. And in any case, these pads, I believe, they're quite cute. So you just <laughs> hold them here with a, with a peg. With a peg. <laughs> yes. In the sun. The sun will sanitize your pads. Yes. And you're good to go. You keep them dry and you'll be able to use them for many months. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've talked about uh, teaching and making the girl child understand there's no shame mm -hmm. in your menstrual period. But when you go to the slums or go to the areas that you're, you're donating these uh, pads, you find girls who have already gone through so much, you know, gone through so much shame. So what's the process of educating them? What, do you, what does your organization do to make we sure that them. apart from mm getting these parts, the mentality on menstrual health is changed. We talk to them. If we had time, I could have shown you clips, eh? but maybe for next time. Yeah, yeah, we course. talk to the girls. I'm a mother, and I endeared myself to them as a mother, and the other ladies that we work with, we even have a hardy barber. Okay. So we just talk to them and tell them that you don't have to live in the past. You're forward, look forward, see what you can do. Uh, now that we have free education, we have not started leading them to go back to school because you find some girls have had even pregnancy, some have done miscarriage, some have even died in the process because they are doing backdoor abortions. Okay. So we just encourage them, we talk to them when they come, we take each individual case and we have not found anybody that we need to hand over maybe to another organization that can handle the scope of what they are going through. But I have counsellors with me, I have women who have who are also interested in this. Mm. Yeah. So what are some of the cases that you face through in the slums that the cults go through and what is the, like the most extreme case that you have dealt with? So far, um, I have the girls that I have dealt with who have had an issue were 10 girls who are pregnant and they dropped out of school. I just looked for them. This lady, Mama Kamu, I just told them, they were more than I could handle. I wanted only 10, and also with COVID restrictions. So they came and we talked. And now they're called Ahadi girls. Mm -hmm. They're empowered. Also, in okay. Islam, there are rape cases, mm -hmm. and that is why we were teaching them self-defense. The box girl, 
people. We teach them self-defense. One of the first self-defense is to scream. Okay. Because some people don't scream. Just scream, don't be embarrassed. Shout out. That will be your first defense. And then others will fall. Maybe you can list Izo Zingine after screaming. Sasa unajua after screaming, mse asha stuka. Ata kuacha tu. After screaming now, simu asha fundisho a self-defense ya boxing. You can pull out a stance. Mm. Yes. So what and you mm. normally this the houses in the slums they are not at the walls are concrete at the yeah, yeah. people will just come. Mm. So uh what I'm understanding is that you guys are not only about uh menstrual health but you're all about the culture. Maybe you can list some of the activities that happen uh in Ahadi uh, mm. apart from donating and giving out pads. Okay, I train women in the slums to make pads. Okay. Now, Fundisha Kushona, I'm on my second girl right now. The first one has really gone beyond me. She has gone and gotten a job. She's earning maybe a lot more than I, because you find that mine is almost like a donor organization. I, I need to rely on other people. I'm on my second girl, but I've also trained two men. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, even now if we go to my workshop, you'll find there are two men and one girl. The one man is doing the cutting because I got some work. This other man is teaching and the other one. So I, the first man I trained, me I've always been teaching. We had a sewing machine at home. Mm -hmm. So I have skills, though I'm a teacher. Yes. So I have trained those ones. Secondly, we need to do a get together. We wanted to do a get together at the middle of April to follow up on our girls because we told them they'll come back. We have quite a number of girls, by the way. So we would follow up, have a cup of tea. I had a dad uh, promised them a bash. Bash ni chai na mandazi. <laughs> and Coca-Cola, bless the Lord for Coca-Cola, they give us drinks. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, those are the things that we do. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've also talked about boxing mm -hmm. and uh, self-defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just wondering, uh, you said that after you donate your pads, you just don't leave the guards until yes. to me Malizana na Islam certain to the they come back. And we have they their phone numbers. Okay. We have the people who brought them uh -huh. can still follow them. Because even their parents wouldn't just allow them to go anywhere. Though they, some girls can sneak. So we, we just follow them up. So when they come back, do they come back to be part of a Hadi Ama they come back uh, just to say I'm grateful? Like how, how is your organization? Our organization does not have a hard set rules because also we are evolving. This is our third year. Okay. When I started I had I thought that I'll just go to cabs, they'll give me a cabs, then I'll have my product on the supermarket. It wasn't working that way. And I still needed to reach out. So they will come for activities. Maybe we haven't arranged, but when they were going to come back for these girls, we'd just have activities. They'll play ball, they'll talk. These three groups will discuss how was their school term and what are their grades. Mm. Yes. So maybe you can list some of the positive changes that you have noticed uh, from the time you started this organization, Pakasai. The girls are confident. They're not afraid that they're menstruating. And the boys in the schools where we have gone, they're not going to laugh at them. I just asked the boys one day, the whole class, how many of you would like to be fathers one day? All of them. And how many of you would like to be mothers? All of them. Then the only way you'll become a father at the right time is when you find a lady who is healthy and menstruating. Then you can become a father. They just went. So don't laugh at them. They're your sisters and they're your future wives. Mm. So we can find that the attitude is changing. You see, like when I came into the studio, one of the guys was saying, hey, easy V2. <laughs> you know, they're not V2, they're just panties, uh -huh. underwears, <laughs> and everybody needs them. Uh, so we should not be ashamed about a natural process, yes, and it is beautiful. When a girl, if you had reached your age and maybe you hadn't been treated, so you would have to India, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you'd have gone to India mm. to be treated, so that's how it is. Mm, okay, mm. that's really interesting. Mm. And maybe you can uh, tell us uh, the, the materials that are used to to stitch and to make uh, the pads? I've told you, uh. because we want to make this affordable, we could have used a cotton fleece, okay. but cotton fleece is, fa is 600 shillings. So is this uh, something that you can make on your own, if you are home? Sinazi to not No, like a common mwananchi, a common girl Thank you. who doesn't have the in, cash. Uh, in areas like Pokot, where we want to go, 
and also in Kajiado, we tell them they can make their own pads. Uh, they can use cotton materials that they have at home, like they can use old sheets, they can use um, t-shirts, they can use towels. And so we just, like some organization in Kajiado was calling me to come and train girls to make, even in Kisumu. So I just go and train them. You look in your house and you see what is available. By feeling, because I will be having different pieces, you can be able to tell which are the absorbent ones. So you just put layers for yourself and you can use. Mm. And you maintain hygiene. So is that part of your education, like how to make your own pads? Yes. Like when you're educating the girls, do you educate them on how to also make your own pads? Yeah, that's what, one of the things that we do. And uh, in a month, mm. uh, how many pads does a lady require? Uh, the ones that we, we give are four pads. You see? These four pads you can use. But a girl would really need to build them up. If a girl would have eight pads, she can be very sure that she will not have any trouble. Mm. She will always have one in her bag, and then whatever happens, she'll just use, then she can change easily. This is because sometimes the weather does not allow them to dry. Yes. Sunona, they dry relatively fast in a fair weather, but when it is wetish, it might need a day or two to dry. So if you have more, it is better. Mm. And you don't have to have all the more at once. You can build up the stock. And have you faced a case of rejection? Like, have you gone to a place and uh, uka face rejection maybe from the girls themselves that, like, they are not willing to come out? They're still in that cocoon? No, I haven't had that because uh, the outreaches that we have had, the girls are really enthusiastic to come okay. and they call their friends. You remember I started with one girl and she called her friends. Mm -hmm and then the area rep came to know about it we don't have capacity we'll just go step by step so we took 10 girls the ones for mama girls then we took 25 then we took another 25 then we took another so like in another place children's home in oroma i wanted to donate only 10 pads but i felt in my spirit take 20 Kasematuni sawa, lakini it's well. Mm. I think that is why God has blessed me with another job this okay. time. Mm. Mm. So what are some of the challenges that you face? Challenges, majority, is that I really need people to come and support me by buying pads. I would really love organizations that have as stakeholders in education for girls to come up and buy pads for the girls. I know the government gives some. In one school where I went, uh, the girls are given three pads a term. They go home, there are three women in the house. The next day the girl comes to the school and says, teacher, ni a pad. What happened? You just given pads last week. My mother took them. So you see, that is what we really need to go out and, especially the school girls, if we can give them all one packet of reusable pads. Then we, they can have the other ones also, just like a standby. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you have talked about uh, a student or a child coming to tell you that the mother took it. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes me to another question. Uh, do you also educate them, the mothers or the parents, on how to talk to their children when they get to that point in their life? Where Not yet at okay. the moment mm -hmm. because um, I don't think that would be our area. We are dealing with a girl okay. directly. Okay. Yes. And as I've told you, we are a small organization. Okay. We better just concentrate on what we need to do. Okay. Yes. So as you're winding up, maybe mm. you can talk to the girls out there who are mm. listening to you. Yeah. What advice would you have for them or what would you tell them? I would really tell the girls that uh, you can make it. If I made it, then you two can make it. Period should not hold you back. And in case you really need help, you can even go to your local chief and tell them they would have programs. But these are the days when girls can compete equi equally with the boys. What a boy can do, a girl can do. I don't want to say better because there are so many boys are crying out here from the area here we quite neglected. Yes. So we are pushing them. But we are also telling the girls, Musia Chilie, mm. Shikilia too. Right now you see Tanzania has a female president. So why can't you become the next president of mm. Kenya? Okay. You can. You can be the Mrs. of Alliance girls. 
you can even be the vice chancellor or the chancellor. We had the chancellor of Kenyatta University, she's a woman. Mm -hmm. So nothing should stop you and periods should not be anything that should hinder you in your path to your destiny. Our tag is support a girl, help her fulfill and maximize her potential that would lead to her desired destiny. All of us have a desired destiny. So once you've identified that this is what you'd like to be and be, concentrate on it, focus. Okay. Okay. Yes. Maybe you can also share where people can find you or if uh, there is anyone who wants to reach out. To um, you. The easiest is my phone number. Okay, maybe you can share it with us. My phone number is a Safaricom line number. It's 0723-309-229. I repeat. Yes, you can. 0723 <laughs> mm -hmm. is uh, Safaricom. Uh, we can communicate and see exactly how you can come in to help us support the girls. Then we also have a Facebook uh, at Ahari Pads. Is, it, is that how it's said? Yes. Ahari yes. Pads on Facebook. Ahari Pads on Facebook. That, that way you can find us very easily. Okay. Thank mm. you so much, Elizabeth. Mm. Your story is really inspiring. Mm. And on to Ahadi Reusable oh, Pads. Ahadi Reusable Pads. Mm. So you can find her uh, on Facebook at Ahadi Reusable Pads. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and creating time to demonstrate and helping the girls in the society. Welcome. So that was Elizabeth Okos, who is a phenomenal woman in the society, who is helping girls in the slums and in the society to to know more about menstrual health and also donating parts to the society so usibanduke uh, right about now we'll take a short break but next on a discussion na uh, val yes and don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms at y254 channel Thank you.